Well, hello there, everyone. Now, my name is Amy. This is the Opinionated Woman, and welcome to a reading vlog, a South African reading vlog, my fave. Um, with my other reading vlogs, if you watch my previous South African reading vlogs, I usually pick three and do like quite a big vlog for that. But I decided, nope, this time I've got a book. Oh, did you see that sneak peek? <laughs> so if you've watched my uh, best second and bookstores in southern suburbs, you will see that in Ob's books, I found coconuts, Bukapano Matla. And I was so excited because I saw Nonzama Shangase talking about it and she like wax lyrical about it. So I was like, okay, I really am interested in reading this book. And then it was just in front of me at the second I bookstore. And I was like, yes, amazing. Um, so this is basically like, I don't know, is it a, I don't know if it's like a global thing where someone is referred to as a coconut if they are like black on the outside, white on the inside. Um, but that's what they, what's the term that they use here. Um, and <clears throat> it says that this story is about growing up black in white suburbia where the cost of fitting in can be your identity. Um, so it's about a Filwe, a Filwe and her brother Tsepo who are swiftly losing their culture. And that's something that I think, uh, like obviously I can't relate to it directly. Look at the color of me. <laughs> but um, I went to a, a private school um, in Johannesburg where there's a set. Um, and it was predominantly white. Um, I mean, we'd only been out of apartheid 18 years when I graduated from there. So, yeah, it was predominantly white. And um, a lot of the black girls were referred to like that. They were like a lot of girls got given the coconut label, you know, and um, I think it was like I wish I could have talked to them about things like this but I just wasn't aware I was just so in my little white bubble um at school like I didn't ask them what their experiences were like but there there were a lot of girls that got labeled as a coconut and um I know that it it is quite common for people to then start rejecting their culture because it doesn't seem to be the thing that you want to you know to, to fit in basically um so i think that's what this is going to cover and i am so excited um i think apparently it's going to be it, apparently it's beautifully written and i'm just really excited to have another south african author because each time that i read a new south african book i have another author in the back of my mind to be able to pick up like when i want to pick myself up a new book and i know there's there's another one of kapana matlas that i already have on my tbr so i'm excited to give her it, it is her right she yes <laughs> so I, i'm really excited to get into this one so without further ado let's get reading Hello pals, so I officially started coconut this morning, um, which is interesting because my hair smells like coconut. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm really liking the way that it's uh, that it started out. We started off at a church, <laughs> um, which is obviously a very common thing in South Africa. Um, and uh, there's very much like parts where, so in, in the normal font, in like the regular font, it'll be what's happening in this moment right now and what like conversations with Felua is having and things like that and then it goes into italics and it changes into her thinking about other things so she's getting distracted from the sermon and then something from the sermon will bring her back and then we'll go back to the normal text and then she'll lose interest again and she'll go back into italics and start thinking about different things um we've already had a conversation about her getting her hair relaxed um because she wants it as straight as possible um and yeah, I haven't got too far into it yet, but I realized I was vlogging and I could moan about what I needed to moan about. Oh my gosh. So basically, I don't get, like my PMS like it really changes depending on the month. But I, usually the week before my period, I will get um, like mad stress dreams. Um, and then during my period i also might get a little bit of like stressful dreams this time the stressful dream started two weeks before my period um like three times within one week i woke up sweating so much in the night i had to change my pajamas three times in one week then my pms week again slept like shit. and this week so far it's thursday now 
I've had stress dreams and slept like shit every single night. So like I haven't slept properly, properly in three weeks and I'm so tired, <laughs> like absolutely knackered. Like luckily the work that I got to do today is like not overly strenuous um, for my brain. There's not too much research involved, which is really good, but oh, I'm knackered. I just want to be able to sleep properly. I don't even sleep properly on the weekend and I, sl and I sleep in and I get a lot of sleep. Like I make sure that I get a lot of sleep, but when all of that sleep is taken up by stress dreams, <sighs> stressful. Anyway, I will get back to you when I have something interesting to tell you or if I have carried on further in coconut and I'll let you know what I think. Filming that clip made me like reminded me of something else that I had to moan about because my arm hurts. <laughs> I did a workout yesterday, a mad fit workout, and there were push-ups in it. And I don't do push-ups very often. I really don't like push-ups. I'll do weights with my arms all day. I'll be doing curls and chest presses and all that kind of stuff. I just fucking hate push-ups. And I was doing them yesterday and I pushed through and made sure that I did them solidly. Oh my god. My arms are like literally I don't want to hold my camera up anymore. Oh Okay, so I'm already really liking um the different references because obviously this is like based in the South African school system. So she's talking about her Afrikaans teacher, Mrs. Fanikak, in grade seven and packing up her yellow space case. I was like, oh my god, I like, I was so thrown back with the term fucking space case. Um, that's what we used to put our uh, stationery in um, at school. I don't know, pencil case? I think that's what they would call it overseas, but yeah, that was really cool. And then talking about people singing Mafiki Zolo and watching KTV. KTV! Loved KTV. Um... And even, even like, they, she's describing a group of people walking along sing, singing Mafiki Zolo and carrying black and yellow checkered plastic bags, which you know is like from some little corner shop liquor store, you know, <laughs> like, but you don't even know that if you're South African. So it's like that kind of thing that I really enjoy when I write, when I read South African books, but yeah, because I mean, this is up in the suburb, in the suburbs, in the suburbs of Joburg, and that is how I grew up. So, yeah, it's very interesting. I'm enjoying it. Right, so I've done my work for the day. Hooray! It's Friday. Woo hoo hoo! Um, so I was planning on going to the library tomorrow because this book is only like it's just under 200 pages. And it's really, really easy reading. Like it's, I mean, not like easy reading as in like, it, it's compulsive. Like you want to keep reading, you know, it's that type of book. So I'm nearly done. Uh, well, I'm not nearly done. I'm nearly halfway. Um, but once I am done, I want to go to the library because I currently, okay, on these shelves, this one I haven't read, but it's that I'm saving for pride, if I possibly can. Um, nope, I've read all of these. Yes, I've read all of these. Um, and we've got White Chrysanthemum, uh, The Turn of the Key, <clears throat> and, and Happiness by Amanetta Fauna. Those are the only books on my shelves that I haven't read. Um, oh, as well as Oranges Are Not the Only Fruit by Jeanette Winterson. Um, but that's another one that I also want to save for my pride reading. So I only really have three books on my, um, on my shelves that I can read. Um, so I thought that it would be a very good idea to keep on using the library because I found some really great books the last time. And that way it gives me more time to stock my bookshelves again. So like... Christmas is coming up so like I know I don't know if I'm getting 
books for Christmas from anyone else, but I know that I'm getting books for Christmas from me. <laughs> like my, my Christmas present is definitely going to involve at least a book for me. Um, <laughs> so Christmas time is usually like a time when I get a few more books. Um, uh, and then my birthday too. Yeah, that's coming up. But um, yeah, because I read my TBR to basically zero, um, I now need to go use the library. So now that I'm done with my work for the day, why don't we go now? Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. I'm trying to find a place to put my phone so that I can show you the books. But I'm just going to hold you because I want to show you. Oh my gosh. Like, I have such good luck at this library. Or maybe this just library has really, like, good extensive um, catalog. Because the last time I only made it up to G until I had all three books. <laughs> um, so I was going to start at G and carry on. I was like, no, let me go to the new in section. So let me just see if there's something new. We have The Girl with a Louding Voice by Abby Dare, which has been on my, uh, my, <clears throat> which has been on my TBR since, when did it come out? This said this was book bought from the book lounge, that's cool. <laughs> um, 2021, something like that, but this has been on my TBR forever. Um, it's Nigerian fiction. I'm really excited to read it. Um, and I nearly bought this last year, and I can't remember why I didn't, but yeah, now I have it. The other book that was in the new section fucking Midnight Library by Matt Haig. Like, obviously this has been all over BookTube, like all over it, but I haven't been able to get hold of a physical copy. Um, well, I like, I haven't had the funds to buy the physical copy. Um, and it has been on audio and I spotted it and I was like, are you fucking kidding me? So I'm really excited for that one. And then I didn't even make it to the G section because I went to the African fiction section because I was thinking, like, like I said at the beginning of this vlog, when I find a new, uh, a new at uh, all, well, I thought she was South African, turns out she's not. When I find a new author, um, I, I need to go back and like read their, their backlist, see if there's other books that they have or see like the new books that they're coming out with. Um, so I read An Unusual Grief by Yawande Omotoso, who is actually, she was born in Barbados, grew up in Nigeria and moved to South Africa in 1992 and all her books are set in South Africa. So I thought she was South African, um, but it doesn't really matter. It's an African author and it's set in my country. So I picked up Bomb Boy by Yoanda Omotoso. Um, I don't know too much about this. It sounds very interesting. Um, it's set in Cape Town, which is obviously where I live. So yeah, I think I have a really great haul here and I'm excited to read it because I need to read 15 books. They're not 15 anymore, 13 books by the end of the year to hit my 100 book total. So I am perfectly happy to dig into that <laughs> and hit that hit that uh, hit that goal. Um, so yeah, going back home now. One thing that vlogging has helped me get very comfortable with is being on camera when I had just woken up. <laughs> I've been awake for a bit, but yeah, look at this. Goodness gracious. Um, yeah, so I'm about to sit down and read Coconut. Last night I got to page 129. So, madam. Get out of my way um so <laughs> i've got like 70 pages left only which is wild um so we follow a fellow in the beginning and she's you know very rich growing up in a white suburb straightening her hair um very much losing her culture and then we've now swapped perspectives to figile yes figile who is a waitress at the restaurant that um, Ophelia likes to go to with her family and for some reason Ophelia really doesn't like Figile um, but I'm interested to see what Figile's idea of Ophelia is like if we get that kind of comparison because um, Ophelia lives in a um, in the township she lives in a one-bedroom place with her uncle and um, trigger warning for sexual assault um, so already the comparison of their living situations are so dramatically different. Um, so they experience life in such a completely different way, even though they are both um, black in South Africa. Um, it just shows the, the, the disparity that happens here, which is like, say, oh, there's a weaver on my feeder. 
Hello, sir. You are beautiful. I love birds. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so I'm going to carry on reading this. But another thing that I wanted to say since I've been vlogging, um, if you've watched my videos at all, you know that I'm really into crochet. Like, I fucking love crochet. I've been crocheting since May, June, like around there. And it is just like, it is nonstop for me. <laughs> like, I, if I don't crochet in a day, it's very strange for me. Um, so there's this company called Chunky Boy Craft Handles. And I saw her on, it's a, a woman-owned company, very small company. Um, and I saw her on TikTok and I was like, these are amazing. She makes these, these, let me show you. They look like dildos, but they are um, handles for your crochet hook. So that it's more ergonomic and it like doesn't hurt your hand over time. Because I want to be one of those old ladies who's like crocheting for days um, and years and years. Uh, so I ordered a handle, but she puts them on sale at 5 p.m. Central in the U.S., which is 1 a.m. my time. So like a dork, <laughs> I set an alarm and I woke up and I ordered a Chunky Boy crafting handle, which I'm super psyched about. <laughs> but I had to wake up at 1 a.m. I was like, oh, I want the blue one. <laughs> Lucky I did, because when I went to her shop, the, those handles, the entire collection, 10 colors, have been out for like eight hours at this point, and all but one color is sold out. So thank goodness I woke up and ordered a handle because I got the color that I wanted. Um, but that is just so fucking dorky, goodness gracious. Um, but now I'm going to be nerdy in another way and read my book. I'm back. <laughs> um, but what I'm finding very interesting about this following Figile's point of view is her... <clears throat> The way she doesn't want to be involved with her people like she when she was a kid she didn't want to go outside and like play with the other kids she didn't like them she said they were stupid they didn't speak English she said they were gonna steal from her stuff like that um, and then when she gets on the on the train um, and I know getting on the train in South Africa is a lot especially for a woman um, but you can see her trauma from the way that she speaks about these things and it's so, it's kind of harsh. Like, it's very, very harsh. Like, she's talking about the people who ride the train and don't bath beforehand and that they're not self-respecting walking around smelling like that. And then she says that the train is moving slowly, probably because of the pay cable theft. She's like, black people, why must they be so damn destructive? Oh. <laughs> oh. So, yeah, there's a lot of trauma and a lot of, um, I suppose, um, not hatred. What am I, what word am I looking for? Um, she's got kind of like a disdain for her own people in a way. And I think it's probably dramatically to do with the fact of how she was brought up and the fact that she was mainly brought up by her grandmother and her uncle, who was not a good guy. Um, but it's very interesting to see the inner monologue in that way. Because, like, if something like that was said by a white character, I would be like, oh, my God, racist cunt. But when it's coming from someone who's of the same race, it's a lot more complex. Um, yeah, very interesting. Oh, my God. I just saw a line here. Okay, let me read it to you. Um, so the, it's going into the... Uh, oh, God, it's very bright. <laughs> um She's thinking about the past, and it says, And you, Figile, what do you want to be when you grow up? White, teacher Zola. I want to be white. Hectic. So today's been very productive. You can see I'm wearing makeup. Um, I filmed my crafty reads. Um, I, because I film every five, uh, I film every five books, because I find trying to sum up more than five books in a row far too overwhelming for me. It just... It really is like very, very overwhelming for me to try and tackle. So five at a time, absolutely perfect. Um, so I was crocheting when I did that. Um, then what else have I been doing? I feel like I've been busy the whole day. Oh, I was doing some editing. I was doing some editing. I've like done the dishes, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Um, but now I've decided to crochet and I am adding on, let me show you. So I'm adding on to these baskets that I keep my crochet stuff in. 
So I find that I'm pulling them out all the time and picking them up. So I added these little handles. So I still got to weave in the ends. I've never done this before. So that's my one. And then I've got one more. And I think that'll also help them to hold their shape better. Um, so I'm going to add handles onto this. And then I'm going to wind all my balls of yarn so that they're tight balls because they're like starting to like get all floppy if you don't if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, Chelsea is playing their last game of the season before the World Cup break. Uh, tonight at half past seven. So I'm going to be watching that. Um, super excited. Hopefully they don't fucking lose again. Um, <laughs> but I will definitely finish coconut tonight and then I will catch up with you tomorrow and let you know how it went. Good morning everyone. It is Sunday and I finished coconut. Oh my God. This book was so freaking good. This is definitely on my list of best books that I've read this year, like 100%. Um, I just enjoyed it so much and it had so much to say in such a little bit of text. Like, like both of these girls that we're looking at are definitely like very disconnected from their culture as the title suggests. <clears throat> and it's just so like seeing it from a Philoe's point of view she's definitely like less in touch like she lives in a white area she's very wealthy there as they mentioned a few times like new money um she's always straightening her hair she goes to private school she always has white friends you know all of that stuff um so there's obviously a very big disconnect between her culture and, and her. But then we get Fix's point of view. And I've, I have chatted about Fix before. But Fix works in this coffee shop that reminds me a lot of the cafe that I used to work at as a pastry chef. Um, very much lots of rich white people. And Fix freaking throws herself at those people. Um, she will know their names. She will know their stories. Um, and she sort of like panders to them quite dramatically. But as soon as the Clue family comes in, which is a Philway's family, she freaking hates them. Like on principle, she hates them. Then they they treat her very well. She's like they they're polite, but she like on purpose won't go to take their order. She's like I don't want to take the order from black people, and she's like sneering at them for being new money. All the while, she has this determination, this like Project Infinity, she calls it. Um, to get to be one of those people, to be rich, to be driving around in the BMW, um, to not have to socialize with black people, um, which was quite intense. Um, so it, it's odd because the Clue family are exactly what she wants to be, but she hates them so much. Like the, the disdain that she has for them, like seeing them walk in the cafe is like palpable, you know? <clears throat> so this is really... Oh man, it's so complex. If any of you have read this book, especially if you're a person of color from South Africa, like please comment down below or like send me a DM on Instagram or something because I would be so interested to see the perspective on this from someone who's black, especially a black South African, um, because I can obviously only see it from a certain angle, but I absolutely loved this book and I really, really, really recommend it. Even though it's like from... 2008 or something, I think, which is when I graduated high school, which is, well, 2007, I was in grade 11. Um, so it's not new by any means, but it is mm, mm, so good. So thank you to Nonzamo Chengase for um, reading this on her vlog, because that's what made me read it. Um, I absolutely had the best time. So if you did enjoy that, um, I always have a coffee link down below for my little one-time tip jar if you're feeling generous. Other than that, like, comment, subscribe is always appreciated, and I'll take you next time.